It's amazing to many of us and to all of us who have been with Waldo and enjoyed his wonderful music these past few months that God has provided so richly for this church um, and we have been so blessed. Waldo answered an ad and called and said, yeah, I could help you out. And what a gift he has been to this church. The music has been amazing. As I sat next to him this morning during his prelude, it was inspiring and so wonderful. And thank you, Waldo, for sharing that gift. We've all enjoyed it. I think that does <laughs> We also want to recognize Sharon, his wife, who's here with us this morning. And not only has she supported him in his service to us and his ministry to us of music, she's participated. And we've enjoyed her offerings and her participation in our worship also. It's such delightful. Uh, and I can imagine the joy of music in their home. It's just, it has to be amazing. We thank you, Waldo. We wish you the very best in your new church and your new endeavor and the work that you've always done. Um, would you like to share a little bit of that with us? Uh, thank you for the opportunity that I have to speak with you. You know, it is, a, it is a, an amazing privilege that we have as children of God that we know that there is only but one God, one Son, one Holy Spirit, and one kingdom. And when Jesus announced the fact and he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all these other things will just happen, um, that is our honor, that is our privilege, and of all gifts and all presents that we could ever find, that is probably one of the greatest that God gives us. So it has really been my honor and my privilege to worship with you. Um, we are starting a church just down the road. Now, for many people, that will sound like, oh, this is the start of a competition, but the kingdom of God is not a competition. It doesn't matter if you call yourself a Baptist or a Presbyterian or a Charismatic or a Catholic or a Independent. It really, for God, it doesn't matter. What matters for God is that you love him and that you accept the love that he gives you and that he can have a relationship there. So the church that we start is really birthed out of my day job, which is to be involved with a television broadcast ministry. We are headquartered in South Africa. We had a, we still have actually, we have a satellite office in London, United Kingdom. And about four years ago, we opened a satellite office in the United States to oversee our digital distribution. And to this day, that is what we continue to do. So we are uh, online, we have an app, we recently launched an app where the gospel is really preached 24-7. All that we are doing is that our live broadcasts, which we do daily from here, uh, we were on Marco Island, we are now relocating to Naples, um, but we broadcast to a potential and really I underscore the potential because this is not our viewership, but we've got a potential reach of 250 million people, either through satellite, terrestrial broadcast, digital means, um, on the web, live streams, YouTube, Facebook, whatever. Um, even if we reach 0.5% of, of that potential audience, we feel that we have done our task. Our main task is to, reach king, is to reach people for the kingdom of God, just to introduce them to Jesus and to say, you are loved, you are special, there is no one else like you. Um, and so, and I know I only had two minutes, so I'm, I'm sure that I've exceeded that already, but I, I can babble. Once I start talking, it's very difficult to keep me quiet. But I would like to leave you just with one encouragement. Um, as you continue your work here, this church is too small if within a one-mile radius, every person that lived within that one-mile radius of this church came to fellowship here. This would be too small. Um, so it doesn't really matter what we call ourselves or where we are. God has placed us for a reason. This is my encouragement. If you look at your hand, 
you will find that you have a unique fingerprint. There is no one on planet Earth that shares this design that was designed and created individually and specifically by God, the uncreated, for you. It is for him to identify you. Um, more recently, in the last 10 to 15 years, they've started doing voice recognition as means of a security check. So you'll often find that when you speak um, on the phone, uh, they will say that this, this voice is, uh, or, or this call is recorded, and then they ask you security questions. Above the security questions, they analyze your voice. Because did you know that as your fingerprint, so your voice also carries a unique print? So there is no other voice on planet Earth that sounds like yours. And when the psalmist encourages us to sing a new song, I always like to think God is waiting in heaven and is waiting for my song because there is a song that only I can sing. There is a song that he has planted on the inside of my heart that is only possible to come from my voice and he's waiting for that. And so it is the same for each one of us. And together we are the kingdom. Together we are the body of Christ. Together we are the people that can make a change and a difference, not only in our society, not only in our city, but in the world. And not only in the world, but make a change for eternity. Thank you again for the time that you gave me to worship.